So I have been using OpenSUSE now for a little bit over two months, and while I can't believe that two months of my two-year Linux challenge has already gone by, I do want to take a moment to pause and talk a little bit about my experiences with OpenSUSE so far, because I think that it's going to be important as I go along through this experience of using a Linux distribution long term to document my progress, because I know that a lot of people out there are thinking, Using a distro for two years isn't all that much of a challenge. These are the people who have been using Ubuntu since 2008. These are the people who have been using Debian since the 90s. You know, They don't really get the whole distro hoppers mindset, but a lot of my audience are people who are like me. They like to switch between distros, and I think that for them, and, and definitely for me, using a distribution long term and actually dedicating yourself to it is a challenge. So what I want to do today is talk about my first two months of the two-year Linux challenge and I want to talk specifically about OpenSUSE because I truly honestly believe that OpenSUSE is the most underrated Linux distribution out there. It is a fantastic distribution and I want to talk about it. So that's what we're going to do today. Before I jump in, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. Also, when I do the thumbs up thing, for whatever reason, the camera just completely changes focus, whatever, leave a thumbs up, uh, and uh, it would really help the channel, so thank you very much for that. Um, wow, okay, I don't understand that, because autofocus is definitely turned off. Anyways, so OpenSUSE, I want to talk about first my general experience with it, and then I'll go into a little bit more of, the, of a general sense of why I think people don't use it as much as I think that they probably should, so... For the last two months, OpenSUSE has been spectacularly stable. I mean, I'm talking like one of the best experiences with Linux I've ever had stable. And I know that sounds like hyperbole or that I'm overselling it a little bit, but it really has been a fantastic experience. I've experienced a few hiccups, mostly surrounding the fact that I don't know what I'm doing half the time. So I blame most of those things on me. But just from a pure usage standpoint, OpenSUSE has been very, very stable. And I've honestly been very surprised by it because there have been some monumental updates to the system over the course of the last two months. In fact, about a week ago, maybe uh, two weeks ago or so, I, I don't remember if it was before the power outage or, or after, uh, I had a, an update that had over 3,000 package updates on it. Now, I update my system every four days, so I, it's not like I've waited a whole month to do an update. So somewhere between one day and the next four days, 2,000, like 800 packages needed to be updated. It was a GCC update. I'm pretty sure the entire Python stack had to be updated as well. So there's a ton of packages. And when I see that number, or when I have seen numbers like that in the past, usually on Arch, where updating is a big deal, I always get quite scared because when you have a lot of updates, the more updates you have, the more likely something is to go wrong, right? And especially on a rolling release distro like OpenSUSE, I've, ex I've expected more things to go wrong with these gigantic updates that continue to happen. Now, I haven't had any near as big as that one, but I've had several. It's not uncommon, actually, for me to see three or four hundred packages every four days for me to update. And that's not dissimilar to Arch. That's usually the way rolling releases work. So it's not a, you know, a, a flaw. What I'm saying is that I, I would expect, with that amount of updating that goes on, for things to have broken somewhere along the line. But I have experienced none of that. Like, it just reboots and comes back, and while I expect things to go wrong, it just carries on, and it's um, it's been amazing. Now, now that I've talked about it, I fully expect tomorrow to do an update and have my computer not boot, <laughs> just because I jinxed it. But that's probably been my biggest surprise, is that it has been phenomenally stable and the thing is is that like i said i expect rolling releases to break from time to time i expect packages to break sometimes for it to not boot whatever but the longer that i use OpenSUSE, the more comfortable i am with the knowledge that it's probably not going to break now granted it's only been two months so you know we have a long ways to go over the two years of this challenge but i think that I'm confident in saying that this is the most stable rolling release that I've ever used. Now, I, I used Arch for years. I used Fedora, which is a quasi-rolling release, I suppose you could say. It. It's not really, but, you know, whatever. You know, it definitely uses more up-to-date packages than, say, Debian. So, there's that. I, like, I've used 
many different arch based distributions all of them are rolling release so i've used rolling releases in the past almost always i've experienced some issues somewhere within the first couple months and with OpenSUSE, i can't say that it has been spectacularly stable so just to get that part out of the way another thing that i was really worried about when it came to OpenSUSE was package availability because package availability on a distribution that I wasn't familiar with was kind of worrisome for me. Was it going to have the really weird packages that I tend to need? Things like Rofi scripts that I usually use. Things like the terminal fonts and the icons and all the stuff that I really, really want to have on my system that aren't in traditional repositories. Debian oftentimes doesn't have them. Ubuntu doesn't have them. You get the idea, right? OpenSUSE, I haven't had any problems. Now, obviously, there have been some situations where I haven't been able to find the package that I that I needed, but in those situations, I've either been able to go to the open build service, which is basically copper. It's not exactly the same, so don't at me. Don't tell me, oh, these are the differences. I understand that there are differences, but in terms of front-end usage for users, you know, you're adding a repository, and then you can install the... The, the package, it's similar to Copper, kind of like a PPA, only it's hosted by OpenSUSE, right? So so if I haven't been able to find it in the regular repositories, I can go to the open build service a lot of times that it's there. A few times I've had to build things from source, but it's no different than a lot of times having to do the same thing on Arch or on Debian or Ubuntu or whatever. So uh, package availability has been very, very good and much better than I thought it was going to be. The OpenSUSE, the repositories are quite large and the experience of downloading the major stuff that you're going to need, all of it's there. And what I found better on OpenSUSE than I ever did on Fedora is that the packages on OpenSUSE, specifically the ones that are targeted towards Tumbleweed, are kept up to date much better than the stuff that is kept uh, in the Fedora repository. So if you've ever used Fedora, you know that they have a lot of stuff in their repositories, but a lot of that stuff gets abandoned over time, especially once you've started adding in things like from RPM Fusion and stuff. Uh, the repositories aren't well maintained and they're not well pruned. So a lot of times, like with Arch even, the AUR, while it does have a lot of really old packages, it does a good job of telling you when you're downloading an old package with uh, Fedora, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, and a lot of you, you see a lot of really old packages in the Fedora repositories that just don't get updated. Uh, and, he, and this is like major packages, right? And specifically, I'm thinking of i3. The i3 package, at least when I was using it, and I remember I haven't used it in over a year, was really old at that point. And i3 had seen some major updates, and those didn't come to Fedora for quite some time, even though Fedora is much further along on the newer package support than like Debian is, right? So when it came to OpenSUSE, I was expecting it to be kind of like Fedora when it comes to the packages that are available in the repository, not necessarily in breadth, but in the maintenance of it, right? But I haven't seen that at all. The repositories, while maybe they're not as updated as fast as Arch, which I appreciate because they do a lot of testing, you do get the most recent version within a couple of weeks, sometimes within two or three days, depending on what the package actually is. And I really appreciate the testing and the support that they've managed to put into the repositories for OpenSUSE. It's just done a really fantastic job and it's been a very, very good experience. And the few exceptions to the to all of that is a lot of times with proprietary software because I still do use some proprietary software. I know Boohiss and all that stuff, right? Specifically, I'm talking about, in this case, Vivaldi. Vivaldi is a proprietary piece of software. It's not available in the Open Build Service or in the OpenSUSE repositories. You can get a, an RPM package on the Vivaldi website, which you can install. But it's been a piece of garbage every time that I've used it. Every time it updates, it breaks. I don't know what's actually going on with that package, but... What I did there, and I've done a few times since, every time I can't truly find the version of the piece of software that I want, what I've been able to do is use DistroBox in order to get that piece of software. I just download it in, in Arch-based DistroBox. I export it using DistroBox export, and then I can just use Vivaldi or whatever on OpenSUSE, but it's actually running on Arch. So I have some cheats. I'll freely admit that. 
but overall it has been a fantastic experience and adding in the distro box experience where I can just kind of get to the things that I absolutely have to have that opens as I can't provide has been a very, very good experience. And I, I honestly can't tell you how happy I am with the way things have been going in terms of stability and package management and package availability and all that stuff. Honestly, I can say I haven't had this good of experience on Linux probably ever. My Fedora experience there for six months last year was really good. OpenSUSE has surpassed that in terms of how good this has been. Now, let me talk about a few negative things. I, I, I should talk. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, so we're definitely going to talk about some negative things. So first thing first, and probably the biggest problem that I have with OpenSUSE is the same problem I had when I reviewed it two years ago, and that is that Zipper is the slowest package manager, period. Like, it's not even really all that close, to be honest with you. And there are multiple reasons for that. So first off, a lot of people compare the slowness of it to DNF. And uh, that's a reasonable comparison because DNF is also a very slow package manager. The problem is, is that Zipper takes it further. So with DNF and OpenSUSE both have the same problem initially in that the mirrors are slow. Now, even if you do some jiggering and get, getting yourself to using a closer mirror and all this stuff which you can do on both distributions you find that even then refreshing mirrors is very slow where dnf has an advantage is that it supports parallel downloads so when you go to update or download or install or whatever you can set parallel downloads to true on dnf or on fedora in this case and that means that you can download five or ten different packages all at the same time. And it just speeds things up phenomenally. So it makes it seem like as you're installing stuff that DNF gets past the slowness of the mirrors and just kind of speeds up. Zipper, on the other hand, does not support parallel downloads. And they have been working on parallel downloads since 2016. It is now 2023. Uh, you can do the math there. It's been quite a while. They've been working on it. I, I don't know if they're still working on it or if they've just uh, like nah, I'm, I'm given up. I don't know. Uh, I hope they're still working on it. I hope that we see it sometime within the next two years while I'm still using OpenSUSE, but I'm not holding my breath. If they've been working on it that long, it's not that much of a priority for them, apparently. Or there's just a few people working on it. I don't know what the actual situation is there, but they've been working on it for a very long time. It still doesn't support parallel downloads. And that is a big problem because if you're going to send out a whole bunch of updates like that 23 or 2800 update that I saw earlier or, you know, a couple weeks ago or whatever, if you're going to send out updates like that, you have to have a package manager that can actually keep up and make that seem like it's a reasonable, you know, thing to do, right? Uh, that particular update, now I don't know the exact time but it took approximately two and a half hours uh, to download and update or install right it took a long time that is a long time to install updates on a system like mine like i don't want to like i'm very fortunate i have very fast internet i have a very powerful computer it's fairly modern you know i it, it shouldn't take two and a half hours to update my system it just shouldn't no matter how many updates there are on arch never had oops on Arch, I never had that problem. On Fedora, I never had that problem. On Debian, which also has mechanisms for parallel downloadings, never had that problem. Uh, Debian and Ubuntu both do a really good job of providing a ton of mirrors, uh, whereas OpenSUSE just doesn't. Now, they have a lot of mirrors, but none of them are particularly close to me. And also, I found the mechanism for changing the mirrors to be very tedious. It wasn't very easy to do. Uh, if you use Yast, apparently you can do it easier. I don't use Yast, and I'll talk about that here in a few minutes. Uh, so if you're using the command like, line like I am, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. It's not like switching sources or mirrors on Debian where you just go edit a file. Or same, you do the same thing on Arch. Actually, you go to the you know one of the Pac-Man files, and it's just you changing the mirrors. And uh, even then, once I did get them changed, it didn't really, didn't really improve the speeds of Zipper. So my biggest complaint. And one of the reasons why I've spent the last five minutes talking about it is that Zipper is slow. Now, I, I said all of that and that it was my biggest complaint, but honestly, it hasn't been that big of a deal, to be honest with you. It, I, I come across it. I see that it is slow every time I do an update every four days. I also see it every time I install something. But as I've moved on into the challenge, I've been installing stuff less. 
So I see it less often and it becomes less of a problem. So that initial experience that I had at the beginning, always having to update, always having to uh, install new stuff like constantly over the course of the days, I saw a lot more then than I do now simply because I'm not installing as much stuff. Most of the stuff that I need is already here. So that's by far my biggest problem. My other issue is really kind of nitpicky, and that is that the support on OpenSUSE is not the greatest. Now, some of it is just that the community isn't that large, right? It's not the most popular Linux distribution out there, so the community is necessarily small. Uh, it, it's kind of like using a niche Arch-based distro or a niche Fedora-based distro or something like that. You know, there are people using it, but there's not that many, right? And, and while OpenSUSE is probably more expansive than some of those niche distros, it still does feel like a very small community. And because it's a very small community, they're tight-knit. You know, you can tell when you go onto the, the forums of OpenSUSE that not only are there not a lot of people there, because you can basically see all of the new topics in the English category, you know, within a few minutes. Like, sometimes I'll go there and I, there'll be like 10 or so new red messages over the course of the day. You know, there's not a lot of activity on the forums. Now, they may have other sources of support. They may have a Discord or they might have a IRC or whatever. I don't know. I don't deal with any of the other channels for that kind of stuff. I just focus on the forums. You can tell the people on the forums that are very, they all know each other. And they have a specific, like most forums, they have a, partic a particular way of doing things. Uh, and they also, like a lot of, uh, you know, forum users, tend to not be as welcoming towards noobs, to be honest with you. Now, it's not, it doesn't go as far as the arts forums, don't get me wrong there. Uh, but you can see some particular disdain for new users who are asking new user questions. You can tell. Now... For the most part, I got past that pretty easily. Uh, I'm pretty well adept at being able to look up stuff on my own. And then when I can't find the stuff, I can say, hey, I, I, you know, I did these steps and I took the, you know, these are the steps that I've taken. You know, these are the things that I've Googled. Uh, can you help me? And usually when you say you've made some attempt at fixing it yourself, then you get a better response than just saying, hey, what does CD do? You know, I mean, if you're asking that much of a noob question and you never bothered to go look, you get a better response if you at least tried, right? Uh, so it hasn't been that big of a deal for me, but I've seen other responses to other new people that hasn't been as friendly as you'd want. And some of the administrators there are, they, they can be a little bit, I'm not going to say that, that they're mean. I'm more going to say that they are, what's the word that I'm looking for? They're very abrupt they're 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 abrupt right they're, they're blunt is, is another word that i could use there uh you know they're, they're just you know you can tell that they are not as patient with some questions as others so let's just put it that way also i think the actually the biggest the bigger problem there isn't the attitude of the people in the forums it's more that the forums are small so you're not going to have a lot of people there rushing to help you when you have a question now i haven't had a problem getting answers you know, every, you, you can see threads of hundreds, a hundred responses or whatever on the, the forums very easily. People are on there, they're participating, so it's good. But if you've ever gone to the Ubuntu forums or the Ubuntu discourse in this case, or you've gone to the arts forums where you've asked a question and all of a sudden you have like, you know, 10 people, you know, replying to that, like within an hour, uh, you're not going to have that on OpenSUSE because they're just, it's just not as big of a community. That's just kind of the bottom line. And honestly, that's the a bigger problem than the attitude of the people there. And when I say po problem, it's not really something that they can fix because y you can't just say, hey, more people, please use OpenSUSE so we have more support people. You can't really do that. Uh, so it's just kind of the nature of the way OpenSUSE is. It's just not a very big distribution, and therefore the community is not very big. That those are the two negatives that I really have to say about OpenSUSE. Everything else has been fantastic. I know I've been going on now for over 20 minutes before editing uh, about how awesome OpenSUSE is. And I want to transition into the second part of the video finally. And that is to talk about why I think OpenSUSE is very underrated and why people just kind of don't give it as much credit as they need to. So first off, it doesn't feel, and I might be wrong about this, it doesn't feel like OpenSUSE is as on the forefront of developing technology as, say, Fedora is. One of the reasons why Fedora is so popular is because 
when a new piece of technology comes out, usually Fedora is the first to get it. And that's because of the people who develop Fedora are also the ones that are working on things like Pipeware, things like Wayland, things like, um, you know, System D and all this stuff. Like most of the technology comes from the Red Hat side of things, and Fedora is the first distro to benefit from all that stuff. And because that's true, more people use Fedora, more people test Fedora because they're testing that technology on Fedora. Also, and this is just frank facts, uh, Red Hat, which is the closest distro that is kind of associated with Fedora, you know, it's it sponsors Fedora. It's mu it's a much bigger thing than OpenSUSE is, or in this case, SUSE is. Now, SUSE is a big corporation. They make a lot of money. A lot of people, a lot of corporations use SUSE as their uh, distro of choice, but they're not nearly as big as Red Hat is. Not even close, right? They, their their revenue is like in the hundreds of millions, where the Red Hat sponsored by I, IBM, they make billions of dollars. So you you can tell that there's a a significant size difference between these two, uh, you know, groups. And SUSE sponsors Open SUSE, and it's kind of correlatingly small, just as you know, compared to Fedora is. So part of the reason why Open SUSE is so small is because, you know, it's just sponsored by a company that is also small. Also, and this is just a theory on my part, it's a very much more of a European distro. Here in the United States, not a lot of people use OpenSUSE. There's a few of us out there that are very vocal about using it, but for some reason, OpenSUSE just seems to be more of a European distro. Now, I don't know why that is, because it can't be anything about Americans not liking OpenSUSE because it's European, because a lot of people here use Ubuntu, and Ubuntu is not based in America. Uh, you know, a lot of people use you know, Arco Linux or whatever, that's developed by people who are not primarily here. So it can't be anything like that. I just, for, for whatever reason, you get the sense that OpenSUSE is much more popular across the pond than it is here. Uh, and while that is a very American-centric way of looking things, so just, <laughs> I know all of that. You don't need to get into my comments and say, Matt, well, you're an American. You probably should broaden your horizons and talk about, you know, other things, whatever. I, I understand that I'm... I, I'm an American. I tend to have a point of view of an American. It's really hard for me to have an, a point of view of somebody who lives in Germany. I've never been to Germany, so I have no clue what they're thinking. I, I can't do that. So that's just kind of the sense that I get that OpenSUSE is much more popular over there than it is here. Part of that, and I would, again, just kind of my opinion of this, you know, just my thoughts, is that I think that it's because SUSE is bigger over there and people know about SUSE in the EU, whereas over here, SUSE is not as big as Red Hat is. Uh, it, it's just not, people have heard of Red Hat, and it got even worse when Red Hat was bought by IBM, because everybody here, I don't know what the situation is elsewhere, but everybody here knows who IBM is. They've been around for a hundred years. Uh, you know, they've invented computing, basically, is what most people would say. And not true, but, you know, people th think that. So, those are the couple of reasons why I think OpenSUSE just kind of hasn't isn't as popular. Another reason why I think that it is not as popular as say Arch or Ubuntu or whatever is because the community is a little bit different. They're more, and this is just my feeling. Again, I have no scientific data to to back this up. It feels like they're more introverted to me. Uh, the OpenSUSE guys in the you see this a lot in the forums. They just kind of. We, they stick together. They're very introverted. They're focused on the product. They're focused on just going about creating the best thing that they can. They're not out there in other people's forums saying, hey, you should use Arch. You should use Gen2, whatever. Um, people who, who are using OpenSUSE seem to be less likely to tell people that they're op using OpenSUSE. Uh, now, this is obviously not universal, but it just feels like that, that, you know, every once in a while you'll see in like Unix porn someone using OpenSUSE, but they're not trying to sell OpenSUSE to you. They're not trying to get you to come over to the club and, you know, use OpenSUSE as well. Now, here's the thing. They now have me. <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys noticed this, and this is going to sound bad in, in the audio, but I have a sticker, and that sticker is going to stay there for a little while. I'm also posting... Uh, a lot of OpenSUSE content, so we're going to change that. More people should open use OpenSUSE, and, and I will be their ambassador. 
I'll, I'll be the best damn ambassador that there possibly could be. Open SUSE is amazing, and everybody should use it. I don't actually believe that everybody should use it, but everybody should try it. Uh, I, I think that if you tried Open SUSE, you'd be very, very impressed with it. Now, all of that said, I have heard stories from other people who I've talked to and people I'm friends with who haven't had as good experience in terms of hardware support as I have. I have had no hardware issues whatsoever. My Wi-Fi works on my laptop. Um, my controllers work for Steam here on my desktop. You know, the Bluetooth works. You know, everything has just worked really, really well. But I talked to people on Mastodon who, who at the beginning of my challenge, decided that they were going to go with the OpenSUSE as well. And they couldn't get it installed. You know, they couldn't get it to work on their hardware setup. So, as is usual with Linux, if you have a weird hardware setup or you have a particular piece of hardware and maybe it just, for whatever reason, doesn't go well with OpenSUSE, maybe you'll have a different experience and all you can do to know that is actually to try it. So, there's that. One last thing that I want to talk about. I know this video has been extraordinarily longer than I thought it was going to be, and I have no clue how I'm going to edit it all tonight, but we'll see. The last thing that I want to talk about is ButterFS, and I'm just going to talk about this briefly because I'm going to make a whole other video on ButterFS. I know I've been promising a ButterFS video for a very long time. I will get there, I promise. Uh, it's going to be completely different than everybody thinks it's going to be, but whatever, whatever, you know, whatever. Uh, but ButterFS on OpenSUSE is one of its best features. It is fantastic. It comes with Snapper out of the box, which means that every time you do an update, it creates a snapshot. It just automatically does it. You can create your own snapshots very, very easily. Uh, and if something were to go wrong, you can just boot into that snapshot, roll back to it so that it's writable again, and carry on with your day. Uh, now, that's not necessarily an OpenSUSE feature. You can get that on any distribution, but it's set up for you out of the box in such a way that if you want to use some other ButterFS tools like ButterFS Assistant, if you want to use Time Shift, if you want to do that, it's set up in such a way that it actually works very well. And it's just really, really good. Uh, whereas the ButterFS setup on Fedora, they use a different naming scheme when it comes to your sub volumes, which means that Time Shift doesn't work. They also don't, as far as I know, actually use Snapper. They use their own thing. Uh, I might be wrong about that. I never actually got into the whole snapshot thing on Fedora, so I'm just kind of talking out the side of my face on this, but I'm pretty sure that they don't use Snapper, which means that the setup there is completely different. Now, they do automatic snapshots on Fedora, but it's, this does, it didn't seem as intuitive for me as Snapper does on OpenSUSE. It's been fantastic. I've only had to use it once, uh, and that was on a different install before I started the challenge. So, uh, since then, I haven't had to use it, but knowing that it's there, like the other day, for example, the XFC install that I had, which is my primary dis uh, d desktop environment on this system, when I installed it, the XFC stopped working. Don't know, don't know why, um, didn't really care because I wasn't using it anyways. So I just decided that I want to install it. Now, if anybody's ever tried to uninstall a desktop environment, you'll know that things tend to go wrong, especially when it's the one that was installed with the distro. Uh, so I did a snapper backup or a, a snapper snapshot before I uninstalled XFC. Now, it turns out I didn't need it because it worked out phenomenally well. It's just I just uninstalled everything XFC4. System booted right up. The session was gone. It worked the way it was supposed to. But knowing that that snapshot was there, it, you know, it just made, made it much more... It made me actually willing to do that. If I wanted to uninstall Plasma, which is even more notorious for breaking things when you uninstall it, uh, I would create a snapshot of that before I uninstalled, and that way, way I could go backwards. And I think that that peace of mind has just kind of changed the way I use the distro. It just kind of has allowed me to experiment a little bit better than I would if I didn't have that set up out of the box. So... I know this has been a phenomenally long video. I also know that it's been a very rambly video. I'll try to add timestamps somewhere along the line. Uh, I'm not sure how well I'll do that, but I'll, I'll try. So you can jump around if you need to. Um, granted, if you've made it this far in the video, you probably have either already seen the timestamps or uh, you just watched all the way through anyways. If, if that's so, leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd really appreciate it. There goes the camera again. Um, what are you doing, Cam? Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> really weird. Anyways, you, uh, leave a thumbs up on this video. It really helped the channel. If you want to follow me on Mastodon and Odyssey, those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. I'm also on Kofi at ko-fi.com slash the Linuxcast. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thanks so very much for, you, for that. Uh, without you, I, I seriously just it wouldn't continue to happen the way it has been happening. So thank you so very much for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.